Hi, welcome to Wassa Woodworking. On today's show, I'm going to be making the water tower you see in the background. Here's a close-up view of it, and I'm going to take you through all the steps to build it. Hope you enjoy it. To start this project, I started with the 4x4s. Uh, each one has a, a compound miter of about 3.5 degrees at the bottom. And so I'm uh, making all of those, being careful to make sure that I, I know exactly which way that angle goes. And then I started taking the 2x6s and cutting those into uh, pieces uh, for the top and the bottom so that I could make a frame with them. And uh, being careful to make sure that those uh, were cut in the proper way. Then I uh, cleared everything off and worked to level the sawhorses. And uh, while I was doing that, I also rounded over the edges of the 4x4s. So the 4x4s come with a sharp angle, but rounding them over makes them look so much, uh, so much better. So that's what I did there. Before I assemble this, I needed to sand everything over. So uh, this makes everything look so much better. You get rid of all the uh, markings from the lumber factory. And... Um, this cleans them up, makes them look really nice. So once I got that done, I started laying them out and trying to figure out how to put this together. Now it's important to note that uh, the bottom brace actually is up about three and a half inches from the bottom, and that's to allow for the foundation. But you can see as I'm uh, taking my measurements going uh, crosswise, and if I get those even, I'll know that the uh, top and bottom are parallel, and the sides, the angles uh, work out just right. So then it's a matter of holding everything perfectly still and uh, fastening those two by sixes uh, frames at the top and the bottom in. And at first, I think I used some screws to hold it, but then I went back later on with some uh, uh, three eighths inch uh, lag bolts and that really held it together. Now that cross brace in there is just to help give it some more rigidity while I'm uh, transporting it to the site. Now the next frame is pretty easy uh, because everything's level, it's all uh, nice, so I just basically build that right on top using the same techniques that I showed before until I get uh, that put back together. Of course, a lot of drilling, pre-drilling, and um, want to make sure that the braces had a little bit larger holes so the lag bolts would really help pull that um, two by six onto the four by four really well. And uh, next thing you know, it's uh, all finished. So now it's on to the foundations. And what I was originally going to do is take some sonotubes and concrete, mix it all up, pour it to get it in the right spot. And in hindsight, I'm glad I didn't, and I'll tell you more about that later. But what I did do is buy uh, these preformed concrete uh, bases that you use for uh, porches and small decks. And um, I bought those and um, out there you can see me digging. Um, getting two in a row is pretty easy. Getting the third one is more challenging because now you have to have it at a 90 degree angle. And you have to start doing the crosswise measurements. Um, this is a pretty warm day and as you can see, I, I really sweating out that shirt, but uh, uh, not so much fun working on the ground. In fact, this is the part of the project I like the least. Um, but having that little knee pad, that blue piece that you see there is very helpful for your knees. And as I got each one together, I would lock them in place with that bucket of gravel, ensuring that they're in the right spot. And uh, after about an hour's worth of work, it was all finished. So before I take up to the railroad, I want to make sure that everything's going to fit just right. That works out the best. So I took the two frames, put them horizontal, and uh, started working on that 2 by 6 brace at the bottom. Once I got a bolt in there, I checked everything for square and then added that extra bolt to make sure that it would be nice and straight. And once that got done, I erected it vertically and started working on that fourth side. And But first I had to make sure it was all level because the patio, of course, would slope out and away from the house. So once I got that done, I could work on that middle cross brace, putting that in, and then going back and laying some 2 by 6 boards across it to give really the bottom of it. And this is the decking that I'll be standing on if I use this to take a shower, which I'll say works out very well. But uh, so anyway, I work on that fourth side, getting that top brace on, making sure they're using lag bolts because this 55-gallon drum is going to weigh a lot. And I want to make sure that it's well supported. And then it was time to put up the boards and then go get the drum and bring that back, which was a bit of a hassle uh, because the drum does weigh a lot. 
made sure a couple of the screws were in and up goes the drum. Now I want to check to make sure it holds water. So I put a hose in there and let it fill on up. So I strapped those frames on top of the car and drove all the way up to the railroad. And uh, once I got them up there, I went to place them on the foundations that were already finished. Remember I did that in the beginning of September and wouldn't you know it, I was wrong. I made the critical mistake of, in my mind, um, thinking that 32 and a half inches and three feet, two and a half inches were the same. And I know this is a problem. I always try to go with inches instead of feet and inches because of this. But because of this, now I had to completely redo this, which is a real pain because this takes about an hour worth of time. So luckily in this time lapse, you can see me moving all those stones back out and making sure that they're nice and square. And um, I get that done and I used play sand this time to help, which made it a lot easier to move the pieces around and get them nice and square. So now it's time to actually take the frame and try to put it back into position and see that they all fit. So I think in here somewhere I test it and then I uh, start holding some braces up because remember each of these don't stand vertically, they lean in a bit. So I needed that um, brace on there just to hold the first one. And once I got those up, I could put some cross braces on and um, I knew it wouldn't fall. And then I could start measuring and making sure that everything's nice and square. So now that it was square, I could start working on the bracing at the bottom and the bracing at the top and ensuring that everything was really, really strong because that uh, barrel is going to weigh quite a lot. And the last thing I want to do is have this thing fall down or fall on the cabin, something like that. So I get all those pieces in and um, once that bracing's together, now I can smooth everything out on the ground and start working on putting the decking boards down. That orange strap you see was actually used to try to force it into position until I got the weight all on top of it. And that uh, worked well, but it comes off later. A lot of the fasteners uh, temporarily had used were screws, decking screws, but I ended up taking those out and replacing those with lag bolts. So now once I get the flooring in there, it gives me a place to work. It feels better because I'm not working in the dirt again. I really don't like dealing with the foundation stuff. Rather do the woodworking and using the level as a straight edge, I can mark where all the screws have to go. Just a lot of work getting those put in, um, but it looks good when it gets finished. And you can see I got the uh, boards on the top up there, but I need to get a ladder. So I come back and bring a ladder so I can get up there and start working. And the two boards in the middle are most important because there's some pipes that go in between. I have to make sure they're in the perfect spot. But once they're in the perfect spot, I can now jump up there, sit on it, and work getting all those boards uh, fastened down. I found that it was easier to work on top than it was uh, to work on the ladder. At least it seems safer that way. And then from another view, I uh, put the actual top up on the water tower. It's just some sheet metal that's been rolled uh, in order to make a nice sort of cone shape. And that works out uh, really, really well. What I have to do next is uh, take all the PVC piping and there's two holes in the bottom. One goes all the way to the top and then splashes down into the bucket. Um, so it really isn't going to be a, a leaking point. And the other one actually comes off the bottom. And that's the one where you're going to get all the water from for showering, washing, um, really just the water pressure in general. And so it takes a while to get all those put together. But I'd already pre-fitted these back at home. So they went on fairly well. And it was great to see that uh, happening. I also had a piece of clear plastic that runs up the side, a clear plastic hose, so I can see the water level in it. And uh, next thing you know, I am uh, finished with it. So here's the final footage of the water tower. I'm glad I went with the brown. It really blends in, looks a lot like the trees in the area. And uh, really proud of how that work turned out. So if you uh, enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe today. And also, reach down and hit that thumbs up button. Uh, that really helps out. And I'll see you next time on Wassail Woodworking. Thanks for watching.